Hello my beautiful uh, lovely gamers uh, just before the video starts I just want to say that while I was recording this video uh, I was in a lot of pain due to my illness my illness been acting up the last I want to see like last week ish uh, been my, my pain medication is not really biting on it uh, I'm very nauseous I'm very in, in a lot of pain and really exhausted as I slept like three hours uh, down four so if I'm not like super energetic or, like super hype uh, I tried my very best to push through just the pain just ignore the pain Make the video and just get done with it uh, for you guys since it's Monday, Bugs Monday, and I wanna wanna interact and wanna answer your questions and help you guys. Uh, just so you guys know, just a small disclaimer. Um, thank you so much uh, for tolerating uh, my 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 low amount of energy. And uh, uh, yeah, enjoy the video. Hello, my beautiful and lovely gamers. My name is Jonah. Welcome to this episode of Mail Bugs Monday, where I take your ideas, your suggestions. Your questions and i try to answer them in a timely manner um as again if you want to submit your own question to this series the comment section down below our discord server which is linked down in the description but it's general it's just an awesome gaming community um, and so on uh, is where you guys can submit them on the discord server there's actually an own chat room that's called uh hashtag mailbox monday where you can just put in your questions and there's a very big chance i will try at least my very best to come to them in time the golden question of the day comes from Theanne, and it says, what could this do to make Genji better in the current season? Because it's annoying to shoot shields all day and getting pushed uh, or beamed by Symmetra. And that is something that I see uh, a lot of people have been struggling with. A bunker is especially difficult. Like, goats were very difficult. Bunker is very difficult. And there's a lot of people that is um, struggling with. So I think that the easiest way is to actually show you how, uh, at least I play against bunker. Because I don't think there's anything really that Blizzard needs to do for Genji himself um to make him better if there's anything like that then they should make die viable uh, season wise but let me show you how you play genji against the bunker just real quick here so um let's let's quickly run over how to play genji against bunker uh, i have two gameplays one of me in gm this is uh, before rollock but they're still playing i think they're still playing 222 bunker here and the other one is me into the bunker playing on a master account and just stomping on people so the way they want to play against bunker depending on the elo in lower elos like platinum and so on you can off angle a lot more that's what you want to try to do you still it, the gameplay of Genji still hasn't changed against Bunker. Um, again, in competitive, like team game, team, team, the team game of Overwatch, uh, you normally play Genji if you play dive. Um, that's normally when you do play him. But again, you need to, to still focus on the same thing. One, you can still dash through shields and deal a lot of damage and keep a lot of pressure. You can still, two, you can still use your high grounds, right? To off angle on the enemy team, which is really, really powerful against a lot of, of a lot of comps. And three, you still have Dragon Blade, and that's kind of big win condition. And you still do do the same kind of prioritizing. You always look for a kill, an easy kill, not a specific kill, just an easy kill. You always try to deal as much damage as possible. If you can't get a kill, well, look for damage because damage is Dragon Blade, and damage is also an easy kill. And three, you if you can't do anything, then you will do the shield break. But positioning and off angle. So let's quickly look at how I play against this is GM so here I need to play far more slow because they're really good with the halt and the hooks they have made they have an arm that's really good right so I need to slow down especially since it is also uh, OT right now right so right now I'm just gonna be kind of be spamming and shooting the shield I'm waiting for something to happen here right so I'm doing my number one right I'm doing number one I'm looking for a kill right looking for something to happen and because I can't deal damage because I can't off angle due to the halt and the hook I'm doing number three which of course is I'm just breaking their shields Right, so I'm still just playing around that. I'm just, but I'm still notice I'm still off angling. My team is here. I'm here, right? Because I don't want to be in in the spam rate of the hand so or anything like that. There, are, they start engaging and some stuff happen. I reload. I go close. I go in. I have deflect and dash and get out easily. I run in front. I start deflecting. This hand so is super far up, and I punish him for it. Right, just trying to push that kill. Notice again. I knew my blisters were going in. I knew my tanks were pushing. I knew there was pressure on the front line, so I pushed in with my team as I'm supposed to. I'm playing more about my team than I'm doing in dive. In dive, I can play a lot more solo and just kind of sometimes roll up with a winston if I can. Here, I'm playing far more around my bunker. Same goes for here. Notice how I'm playing around my team and then diving the send as soon as stuff happens. Right, we just want this fight. So again, I want to push out aggressively. This ally gets out because I need to play very passive against Bunker, which kind of sucks. But again, it's about still playing around. I dive this hand, so he manages to get out because the Bunker comes out from my right side. But again, still pressuring this high ground. Notice now I'm playing this high ground. I'm just going to farm blade. 77%. That's all I'm looking for here. That's my win condition. I get pushed down. I get pushed out. Okay, great. I'm playing here a little bit. Try to deflect into high noon. Doesn't really happen. Right? And now it's just the same thing. I'm just going to look for something. Right? Here I'm 86 on blade. Okay, they can't punish me. They're all up here. They burn nade. Let's see if we can get something. I'm going to dive in there. 
having a good time, just playing around, trying to apply as much damage as possible, get Blade, immediately pop it, and then go for some kills on the backline, because they can't really do much about my Dragon Blade, right? And that's how you play it against, like, GM. This is a far more slower pace. Let's take a look at this one, 305, right? So let's take a look at this. This is me playing, this is, like, in Masters games, approximately in rank, like low Masters. Uh, again, controlling high grounds, just doing some damage, right? Just playing this out, getting the Blade. Killing, this is just a kind of like a cleanup. Again, Dragon Blades are still super powerful against a lot of these uh, bunker comps because there's not uh, as strong as an emphasis on, on protecting the back line. Like a lot of players, and especially in the lowers, like in here and low masters, they don't really protect the back line. On top of that, these guys don't really have much of anything that can do anything. Right? Killing staggers is, 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 is mandatory. And now again, we push the spawn. This hasn't changed. It's still the same play style as always. We just like quickly push the spawn, right? Start poking here, right? The, the Orisa's a little bit FK. Poking, poking, poking. Again, playing this off angle, trying to make sure she popped the shield too far forward. Now we look at all of these juicy kills that I potentially can get from this position. All of these guys are vulnerable to a certain extent. I have the flag, I have dash. He's not in stun range, right? I can get in, I can get out. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm going to go get the Orisa kill because the enemy team is bad. Dash back out, right? 77 on the blade, right? And again, continue doing my same thing. Take this high ground from them, try to pressure them so they can't set up their snipers. Doomfist went in, so I follow up on the Doomfist, which I'm supposed to, right? Trying to get some ult shots here. Again, just building up that blade, which is my win condition, and you kind of get the gist, right? It's, it's very much the same. The only difference is that you need to off-angle far more. You can farm a lot of the Orisa, and it's, again, uh, it's very similar. Just It's it's like playing against uh, Death Ball with Ryan, just it's a little bit more difficult because stuff like this. As soon as Orisa, for example, has poured, has popped Fortify, you can easily kill her, right? As soon as this is down, I can easily kill her, right? So uh, let's go back to the video. I hope that this helps a little bit. Uh, I can make a dedicated video if you guys want. Uh, tell me down the, in the comment section if that's the case. Now, with that out of the way, the second question of there comes for Thick Boy. Uh, <laughs> God fucking damn it. Names in the Discord server sometimes. Uh, do you think uh, a certain heroes require low or high sense? Uh, and what would you recommend for a Genji player? I, I don't think that any heroes need... So it's kind of difficult. Sensitivity is incredibly individual in FPS games in general. Uh, I think heroes that need to 180 is in general good to have high sense. Both for hit scan, for projected DPS and so on. Genji needs to be able to 180 very easily and rotate a lot of rounds. Same goes for Tracer who, who blink 180s all the time. Hitscan needs to be able to so a lot of time flick um, and so on. So I think that uh, most heroes need higher sensitivities. The same goes for tanks. A lot of tanks need higher sensitivities to be able to do... Um, again, rotations is important in this game. Being able to spin around because it can be from all different angles and catch people with high mobility. I, don't, I would never recommend any sensitivity um, just because... Again, it's so individual, but a, a little bit on the higher end is, is normally really good. Like, don't go too overboard. I think that finding a nice middle ground that works for you, just pick a sensitivity and then start adjusting it. If it feels a little bit like play with it, let's say you play for it for like a week, if it's a little bit too slow, you do your aim practice with it, you really get comfortable with it, it's still a little bit too slow, maybe turn it up, it's a little bit too fast, maybe turn it a little bit down. Find something that you work with. I know a lot of pro players that works... Uh, with the sensitivity and you don't need to just set one when you pick a sensitivity you can change it if you have good aim and good mechanics i need to not fucking hit the hit the microphone all the time if you have good aim and good mechanics you can just change your sensitivity and and you will be able to shuffle does it all the time a lot of really good aimers do it i run right now i think i run 450 dpi on my mouse and 7.5 in game that's my current sensitivity it could be higher it could be probably like eight but that's something that i think is is a really good sensitivity to play on for me it's, it's kind of the low end, but that's just something that works for me. Uh, the second question comes from Hull, uh, continuing his streak on the on this series. Um, and Hull asks, are you happy with the Curse Energy channel? And I'm not, uh, at all. Um, after making Modern Warfare videos, uh, just making a couple, and then trying to post Overwatch YouTube, my, my, my views are just tanked. That timing with uh, my illness really kicking hard in has really hit me hard. I have no clue why... Um, why I'm getting so few views because I can check my analytics and can check like it tells me how many is getting recommended how many is my subscribers and YouTube is just not broadcasting my videos out to anyone right now which is weird it did it before and I and what I think it happened uh, and I would like to hear if you guys have any suggestions down below I don't think it's my thumbnails or my titling anything like that 
those seems to be fine. What I think it is, is that when I make Call of Duty content, they were recommending every other YouTuber that is big, except me, of course, because I'm very small, that had a base view, that kind of just drowned my Call of Duty videos, and because I got few views, that translated into few views on the other videos. And that's what I think. And of course, again, they don't notify anyone, uh, subscribers, so uh, like on this video, and like on, if you guys, again, liking my videos, watching them, and even and dropping comments, really help in the search algorithm to actually try to get mine a little bit up to the surface um even though well, that's kind of what what helps me um but i'm not sure it's really frustrating right now to see you go from easily a thousand views in every single video whatever i talk about to go to a couple of hundred and struggling to even break 300. it's demoralizing but again i will just continue grinding and i will just continue pushing and pushing and grinding and making content that i like and you guys like uh, and do my very best that's what i will continue doing and hopefully that pays off I'm very sorry that it's going to be a short video, uh, guys, my illness is acting up really hard, so I'm kind of sitting here um, and trying not to to die. Um, uh, so last question of the day, very sorry that it's a short video, this is a short Monday, I will try to make up for it next Monday if I can. Um, come for Silvic, and he asks, for what's your opinion on Blizzard using Overwatch as an ad for LEGO, rather than doing a story-based event, such as the best seed event? I think it's fine. Like, I think that the way that Overwatch is built right now is that it's not monetized in-game that much. Like, loot boxes makes no money, they don't really sell the game, like, at all, uh, and the Overwatch League stuff. It's merchandise and franchising and stuff like that that makes Overwatch money, so I'm completely fine with it. It gives us a cool skin, something to do, and right now, any content that is grindable and that is just playable, where you can earn something by playing a game outside of rank, I'm applauding. And I think the skin is really cool, like there's a Lego flame when you start shooting, and I, I love it. I think that's really cool, and an ad for Lego, I think it's fine. I think it's awesome that Overwatch is branching into so many different brands right now. I love that. It's worked with Kellogg's or Lucio's, it works, it works with Coca-Cola, it works with Lego, I think it works Nerf for Nerf guns. I think all that's just amazing. All that can future or watch as a brand, as an esport, as something that can get out there mainstream wise. I think it's amazing. The more money that comes into Overwatch, the better it is, because the better of the game will be, the better the state of the game will be, the more developers and content they can put into it. So I love that. So I have nothing against it. But again, uh, if it's this question or any question at all, uh, I would like to hear your your opinions down in the comment section below. Um, as always, guys, as Sorry for, uh, what can I say, uh, for all my energy, my endless kind of acting up. Um, but again, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, liking, subscribing, the support. While my channel is just getting abused by the algorithm, for the people that has unpurposely gone over to my to my Call of Duty videos and fucking even dropped a comment where they just say that they dropped the comment and liking the video, it, it, it does mean a lot. And thank you so much for uh, helping me through this rough time. Um, I love you guys very much. Please take care. This is the positive. As always, keep the enemy in your crosshairs.